All right. Hi, Steve. How are you today? I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. How are you doing? Doing well. All right. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me uh, for the Bull City, City International Film Festival. Uh, Paradigm was really fun to read. A lot of twists and turns there. Um, before we get really into it, can you just give me a snapshot of like your career and how you got to where you are now? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> well, let's see. Right now, my day job is I'm a producer at a local TV station here in Pensacola, Florida. Um, but I am a film school graduate. Um, I've been a screenwriter for a very long time. Um, I've done a lot of uh, different jobs throughout my life, uh, but I am just to kind of toot my own horn, uh, an award-winning filmmaker. So I did a, a short film, uh, Survey, <laughs> poster thing up here, uh, <laughs> that's uh, played in uh, over 60 film festivals worldwide and it's, it wow. just picked up its 21st award. So I'm kind of proud of that. That's awesome. Uh, so on to Paradigm, do you recall how you got this idea and where it all came about? Yeah, um, I was unemployed. <laughs> there, was, there was a period a uh, number of years ago where um, yeah, I, I was uh, just work, working from home mostly and I had a lot of free time on my hands. So um, I wanted to explore this idea of what if someone who's just a regular guy, just you know, living his life has some secret from the past that uh, catches up to him. And you know, he's been hiding it from, you know, from his loved ones, primarily his wife in the script. And what measures would he go to to protect the, the life he has from the potential threat from the past? So that, that's kind of where the, the idea came from. And you know, so I, I spent a little, you know, some time developing that. Um, I approached my friend Eric Kaplan uh, in asked him if he'd want to just knock around some ideas and he was gracious enough to uh, kind of be my sounding board and uh, help me develop the story and the characters. And, and then I set about writing the script and um, I've been cool. doing rewrites ever since. <laughs> so, yeah. Great to have a sounding board. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I enjoy collaborating. Uh, yeah, sorry, collaborating. I, oh, yeah, good. I, yeah. Well, I was just saying I enjoy collaborating. Um, I've, I've collaborated on numerous scripts in the past with various writers and mm -hmm. um, Eric, yeah, he, he's the first to say he does, he's not, you know, he doesn't profess to be a writer, but he had some really good ideas and was able to, um, like I said, bounce ideas off. And if I would say, hey, what do, what do you think of this? And he would you know, come back with, well, you know, that's good. Or what about this? And, and so he, he was a good contribution to um, the early story development on it. Yeah, I get that. Um, so, like I mentioned, there's a lot of twists. Did the did you or uh, your writing partner or sounding board partner uh, always know from the beginning what the twist would be? Like, there's some. I don't know if we're supposed to spoil it, but <laughs> there's a couple. <laughs> uh, a couple of people from his past are like no more than you think they do. Did you always know that was going to be the case, or did that come about in the writing process? Um, I think that came about in the writing process. Um, you know, the, the first thing it was to identify basically what it was in the past that happened that he was trying to protect, and then how each of the characters um, kind of played into the, the plot line, you know, without, without spoiling anything. But, right. uh, but I, I like the idea that everybody had secrets. And in fact, that's kind of the tagline that I was using is everybody, everyone, everyone has a secret, um, which, you know, to some degree that, that's true. You know, there's things that uh, you don't want to share with, with others necessarily. But, um, but in this case, it's, it's literal that they were, you know, people hiding certain facts of their lives from other people. And, uh, and it comes back to bite them in a big way. Yeah. <laughs> So this is a very thrilling uh, script. I was wondering if you had any like specific inspirations or people who are just generally inspiring to you or films um, that you've seen. 
what I like to say about it, and, and this is really kind of an ego stretch here, um, is it's Hitchcock by way of Christopher Nolan. Um, ah. <laughs> I, I took some inspiration from both the filmmakers, uh, primarily with Hitchcock. What he likes to do, or like to do, since uh, no one right. with us, uh, <laughs> but oftentimes he would start with just here's some regular people, you know, everyday kind of uh, characters, and then they're thrust into a situation that's that's beyond their control, and you know whether it's you know a woman stopping off at a motel or you know people just on a seaside community suddenly dealing with birds that are attacking them or, you know, espionage or different intrigue. So it's, it's just the regular daily life kind of people and suddenly having to, you know, deal with something that, that uh, is beyond them. Um, ordinary and, people, extraordinary situation. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Spielberg likes to do that too. Right. And so, in which he got that from Hitchcock. Uh, so with, with Hitchcock, a lot of times, his opening scenes are humorous or have, you know, something that connects you, you know, connects the viewer to the characters. And so I wanted to do that also. So I was trying to weave in some humor at the beginning and, and try to make the characters as likable and just, you know, everyday, ordinary kind of existence as much as possible before it gets dark. And, right. um, and with Christopher Nolan, you know, he, he really, I think every movie that he's made is nonlinear in some fashion. <clears throat> and I'm a really big fan of that if it works right. Um, <laughs> there, there's times where you can really botch the, the nonlinear storytelling. But, you know, so the approach I took was extended flashbacks for, for each character, kind of a, uh, and I'm going to botch the name, but uh, Ra Rashomon. Uh, oh, Rashomon. Japanese, yeah. yeah, the old Japanese film. That one. Where you see, there, something happens and you see the event from different points of view and each each character kind of tells their own version of it well that's not what i did with with this as far as um telling a different perspective of it but you see the puzzle pieces being put into place and so i, I wanted it to be basically kind of like a puzzle a mind game to where you don't know the the, tr the full truth until the very end and then once that final puzzle piece comes in, it's like, oh, okay, I got it. So, so that, that, that was definitely my comes through. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love the flashbacks and seeing things from different perspectives, uh, especially the women. Like usually you have the wife who is relegated to the concerned wife role, but she has like yeah. a huge part. And I really love that. Yeah. Um, she's the one character that I was concerned about because there's a lot of internal um, life that she has, mm -hmm. and I wasn't really sure how much that shows up on the page. Um, we, we actually, there was a, a table read at a, a different film festival, I won't mention <laughs> it, um, but uh, they, they brought in some actors to read it, and I talked with the actress uh, about it afterwards, and she you know, really liked the character a lot, and it's like, no, no, I had a lot to play with because of that internal life, and that made me feel a little better because I, I was really concerned of how well she was going to be playing on, on the page. You know, she's she's a little more distant character. You know, the other three main characters are a little more flamboyant, um, and two in True. particular, um, where, you know, she, I think when it, you know. She's more secretive, knows, I think. She's more secretive. She's, she's more withdrawn, um, mm -hmm. more protective. So it's a different kind of character. In, right. It Still effective, I think. Yeah. Well, well thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you mentioned there were a few readings of this script. Do you have any plans for what to do next with this particular work? Um, or anything in the works? Yes. As a matter of fact, um, it, I, I can't really talk that much about it. Oh, you don't have to. It's yeah. a secret. <laughs> um, well, it, it's just there's still a lot of things in the work and it, mm -hmm. in the works, and it hasn't really. Um, totally gelled yet, but we are in development for it. I, I do have um, a producer, Eric Miles from Orlando, um, oh. that is um, partnering with me, and uh, we are in development right now. Um, we're, we're talking with a, a particular company in Los Angeles, as a matter of fact, uh, 
of uh, joining us and producing it. So the financing is, is an issue. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's why I don't really want to talk too much about it because I don't want to jinx it. You know, we're still... Yeah, but you do very much want this to be made. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I, uh, do you have any other... Oh, go on. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was just saying I, I'm planning on directing it depending on... Oh, how cool. Things together, so... Right. So you're a writer, director, anything else to... <laughs> Add to your uh, well, resume. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, my day job, uh, you know, involves editing. Uh, oh yeah. On a regular basis, you know. So, um, you know, I, and I'm a producer. In fact, I'm uh, getting ready to produce a TV pilot with uh, Corin Nemec and Jason London. Black That's very News. cool. So, um, yeah. So, so yeah, I've, I've, I've had a lot of experience doing different things. Um, <laughs> producing isn't my favorite thing in the world. Yeah, a lot of numbers um, and stuff. It, it's just a lot of logistics. And, and you know, I'm, I'm pretty good with logistics. Um, one of the one of the jobs that I do, um, I'm actually a program director for um, a pop culture convention here in Pensacola called Pensacon. And mm. I've been with them uh, going on our eighth year. And so I do all the scheduling and, you know, planning for um, the, the panels and events and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So. So I've got those skills, but you know, my love is um, being behind the camera and working with actors. Right. So directing is your forte. Yeah, it, just make, yeah. making making it come to life, and yeah. there's just really something special about things that you've written, and it, it's on the page, and this is, is this is your dialogue and, and the characters that you've created, and seeing them come to life. It just is really a um, magical experience. Totally. I always like to ask this. I always think that even if people try to deny it, they insert themselves into their scripts somewhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. if, so who in the script do you think that you personally relate to the most? Oh, if not Morgan. All of them? Morgan. Morgan is, uh, has Morgan. a lot. And I should just, let me preface it with, the protagonist. he is a, yeah, he's, a, he's, he's the protagonist. Um, I, I, I put a lot of my personality in him, but there's a lot that's not me. Um, yeah. He's definitely athletic. I'm not. <laughs> so, um, you know, I mean, there, there's, you know, I, 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 cert, I enjoy a certain amount of out, outdoors activity, but uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not a runner. And, it's, right. I, and, and I'm not good at the kitchen. You know, I, I, <laughs> he's maybe uh, an idealized version. <laughs> yeah. I, I got an air fryer for, uh, for my birthday in December and I've been, Putting that to use, like, oh, good! I can throw something in there and, and <laughs> cook it for ten minutes, and it comes out pretty good. Um, so, I mean, there's certain aspects of his character that's definitely not me, um, but his bad sense of humor is me. Um, <laughs> his naivete um, is me. Uh, gullibility. <laughs> I mean, <Right. laughs> basically, all the character flaws are. are from me. Yeah, that always that is... always comes out that way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the good the good stuff about the character, I, you know, I, I made that up. Uh, there, there's a little bit of Tommy, his his friend. Um, there's a certain certain aspects of him that, that's um, mm -hmm. that I take from, from me, but it, I, I take um, some of the characters uh, are based on people that I know in real life, at least certain aspects. Right. It's a fictionalized version. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much. Unfortunately, we have to keep this short, but it was a pleasure talking to you. I would talk to you longer if I could. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for having me. Of course. All right. How do I stop recording? That's the one question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I found it. All right. Thank you so much.